Hello and welcome to Catholic Unscripted. We are here in Ireland for our retreat and we have the great privilege of being joined by Father Sean Sheehy, who will be a familiar name to many of you, I'm sure, because his name was hit the headlines, Father, when you did this shocking thing. Uh, you gave a homily. It was the gospel was on uh, Zacchaeus uh, up the tree and you spoke about this dread word that we're not meant to mention anymore, which is sin. Father, and this blew up into quite a big storm. Um, and we wondered, since we we have the great privilege of being here with you today, whether you might share that story with us and tell us what what the uh, fallout from that was like. Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, on, uh, I had a weekend. I was covering uh, on a weekend for the local pastor, the local parish priest, and uh, and so the gospel for that particular uh, Sunday was. Uh, the about Zacchaeus, and uh, because he was short and he wanted to see Jesus, and so he found a convenient tree which he climbed, and uh, then Jesus uh, saw him and said, to "This this night I will be with you in your house." And uh, so Zacchaeus welcomed Jesus with open arms, and in the presence of Jesus, then Zacchaeus um, had a qualms of conscience because he was a he was a tax collector and he cheated the people and. He, he repented and he said, look, I will pay back whatever I owe and even double it and so on. And he was full of joy, full of joy. And so my whole point was to highlight the joy of forgiveness. You know? And I said, but, but you cannot, we cannot enjoy the, have the joy of forgiveness unless we can identify the sin. And uh, I said, well, sadly, today, you don't really hear very much about sin. You know, it's kind of uh, verboten. It's, it doesn't seem to be accepted. And I said, it has become so normal now that it's actually enshrined in the legislation. And I said, for example, abortion, I said, which is certainly a mortal sin, is, is, is legalized. I said, same-sex marriage, which actually contradicts the law of nature, the law of God, is is um, now uh, legalized. I said the local HAC uh, have been handing out condoms to, to teenagers on the street, which I said is, is promoting uh, promiscuity. And, uh, and, and I said, when that, when that happens then, you know, people uh, forget, the, they don't realize how destructive sin is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I said, Jesus actually came to call sinners. That was his, that was his purpose in coming. And uh, he, he didn't come to beat people over the head about their sinfulness, but to call them to repentance and uh, forgiveness mm -hmm. and to enjoy uh, the great gift of forgiveness. I said, there's nothing greater, actually, than being able to say after confession. I said, that's why Jesus gave the sacrament of, of reconciliation to his church. And I said, there's nothing greater. There's no greater, no greater sense of joy than being able to say, God has forgiven me. You know, I'm now entering into a, a new phase of my life. My soul is clean and my thinking is going to be much clearer. And so my decisions will be much better. Mm. All right. So I had these, the vigil mass on a Saturday evening. People actually came into the sacristy saying, we're so glad that you, you, you identify those things. I had a nine o'clock mass on Sunday morning. People came into the sacristy and said, we're glad you mentioned, you said those things, you know, that you brought up the whole reality uh, uh, of sin. And then it was the, the 1130 Mass when uh, uh, in, the, in the middle of the homily, about, only about seven people actually stood up and walked out. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and then the next, the next um, Monday was a, All Saints Day, so I had Mass that morning. But somebody came to see me um, that day, that, that, you no, know, the Tuesday was, it was All Saints Day. On the Monday, somebody came to see, see me and they said, you know, um, after, after Mass this morning, this is Monday morning, a group of people met at the back of the church together to decide to write a letter to the bishop complaining about what you said. So on All Saints morning, I had the Mass as well. And uh, when I got back after the Mass, I got a call from the bishop. And he, he, his first words out of his mouth were, you hurt so many people. You hurt so many people. I said, how did I hurt people? Mm -hmm. And he, just, he, he wouldn't say how I hurt the people. He said, you hurt so many people. So I'm taking you off the, the, the masses 
until the, the Paris Peace came back. And you, you were there to give them holiday. <laughs> yes. 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 And, and it was a message of love. Let's not forget that. This is a message of love. And it says, of course, we're all sinners, but we, we have to repent. And that, this is uncontroversial. This is the, the church has always taught the things that you have spoken about. And yet, um, there was an apology made on your behalf. There was. And, and so when he, when he called and he said, you know, I'm going to uh, 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 go to Radio Kerry. I'm going to ap apologize, you know, to those people who are hurt. And I said, look, I said, let's sit down and talk about this, you know. Uh, I said, look. All you had to say to the people who felt they were hurt, I'm sorry you felt hurt, but this is the teaching of the church. And, uh, and no, he wouldn't, he wouldn't sit down, wouldn't engage. And I rarely actually write out a homily, rarely, you know, because it's much better to speak, you know, to, to the people and just focus on the church. Yes, and focus on the scriptures as well. So, but for some reason or other, I did. I had written it out. And so I said, I'd be glad to, to uh, email it to you. And you can see, and then point out to me that what I said was contrary to the teaching of the church and the teaching of the scriptures. No, nothing, nothing. And then, of course, he went to Radio Kerry. And as soon as he went to Radio Kerry, you know, then uh, that's when the, all the, the, the whole media onslaught came as well. Mm -hmm. And then he got, he got, got uh, um, I, I forget, which, one of the uh, RT stations, Came as well. So he, but but he did say to, to me, "Don't give it if any if any if any people call, you know, don't give any interviews." But he went to Radio Kerry, yeah. and so my whole thing was he wanted to throw you, well, yeah, to the yeah. Well, well, and exactly. you weren't allowed to defend yourself. Well, well exactly. And, and I said, "Look, I mean, I'm not I'm not uh, ashamed to to uh, talk to any media. They can talk to me all they want." You see, and and so they and so they did, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and I mean, you know, when you stick to the scriptures, you say, and the media are totally ignorant mm -hmm. when it comes to the scriptures and the teaching of the church. And so I did. I don't know how many, how many interviews and whatnot. But then people began to call as well, call, call the bishop and said, OK, you know, then he sent he, he sent out this little uh, what you call it, press uh, release, release yeah. saying that he apologized because this was not the church's, what I said was not the church's position. Then people called him and said, okay, what is the church's position? But no response, no answer whatsoever. And uh, I, I mean, I, I was quite overwhelmed. I said, what, what is this? What's the point of you being a bishop, a yeah. teacher? But, but even for, exactly, but even from my standpoint, you know, what is this, you know? I'm just... Um, Reflecting on the scriptures, <clears throat> and like you said, uh, Catherine, I'm highlighting the joy of forgiveness, you know, which is why Jesus came to call us. You know, and I even said in, in, in that homily, I said, you know, I said, Jesus, as St. Paul said, Jesus is more willing to forgive us than we're willing to ask him. See, too, that shows how willing, how willing he is to share his mercy. But we won't benefit from it unless we recognize that we have offended him and offended our neighbor so that we need to ask for mercy. And there's a recognition of freedom there. That uh, God won't yeah, force. Yes. Love is not love if it's forced. Yes. So it's there. Yeah. Infinite yeah. mercy. Yes. But we have to ask for that. Yeah. And then, of course, when, the, when some of the media people came, of course, you know, they, all, they, they tried to blur the whole thing. And, uh, and, you know, they tried to get on to this bit of the tomb babies, you know, and, and, and all the, the, um, the uh, sexual scandals and whatnot. I said, well, look, that's not the issue. Stick to the issue. And I remember one, one guy from Dublin, you know, three times, I, I, uh, well, I asked him, you know, I said, why do you think Jesus ended up on the, on the cross? Three times he tried to evade it. And the third time he said, well, I guess, you know, what he said didn't suit the people. I said, that's exactly the problem I said in this country. Mm -hmm. I said, what the church teaches does not suit the culture. And so the culture tries to shut, shut, shut the whole thing down. Mm -hmm. Then another, another reporter called, you know, and he said, uh, well, you sound far right. You know, I guess it was a bit facetious. I said, well, I'd rather be far right than far wrong, you know, like you. Yes. Uh, and, 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 I mean, it was for about three or four days, you know, different people finally calling. And somebody, somebody did say to me, you know, well, you really shouldn't have uh, um, spoken to the media. 
But I thought, well, why, why not? You know, why, why? If they, if they have their microphone, you know, and and, and they're, uh, and you know, they're not asking me for the good of the church, or they're not trying to do it for the good of the church. Why would I not say, look, this is what the church teaches? But a doctor actually from England, I think it was a doctor Smith, who I was, the, who is the, <laughs> I know, who is the head of of the uh, marriage and family life yes. uh, organization in England. Who, who said, first of all, he said, I'm a friend. He said, but he said, I want you to remember this. He said, the very people, he said, who shut, try to shut down what you said, guaranteed that it was heard yeah. way beyond this little Absolutely. group of people in the stole and so on. But the, the, the positive response that came from emails, phone calls, uh, letters, we did a program about cards. I did because somebody sent it to me. Yeah. That, uh, that actually, yeah. And and I I'll, I'll never forget what you said. You probably don't remember. You I said have. you you said I'll pray for the laundry that 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 washed it, that puts darts in his shirt to give him a backbone. Okay. <laughs> I thought, well, this woman is something else. <laughs> but it it was overwhelming. And and even priests call me from different places as well, you know, too. So, but but I think it was the prayers of the people that actually kept me going. And what was in, what was interesting to me was I felt no animosity toward Bishop Brown. I really didn't. I didn't. And, and the people said you must have been you must be angry towards him. You know, I said I wasn't really. And I do think I attribute that actually to the prayers of the people. Like I met some people here who told me, we, we prayed for you, you know, and that's what's two, almost two years ago now, two years ago now, I, we, we prayed for you, and it was that. And, um, and some people called and said, well, you know, you, you know, now that you've said this, we can kind of speak about it ourselves. It's like it's no longer um, something, you know, that, uh, that's uh, politically incorrect or, or shouldn't be spoken about or whatever it is. But it, it just threw me. I thought, what, what, is ha what has happened in this country? You know, where, where are the people? Uh, and so on. But I, I don't know. I said, look, you know, why me, Lord? And I think the Lord said, well, why not you? Yeah. <laughs> there, was no, there was no sympathy at all. <laughs> so, it, uh, I mean, I, I just can't fully ex express, you know, how I felt or whatever it was, you just kind of go through it. Do you think it would have happened in America where you No, were, no, no, not at all. No. Not at what, all. What's the difference there, do you think, if you could... If I, you I, could. I, well, first of all, you know, where I worked would be considered the Bible Belt. People are very, look, you know, I mean, they, they took the Bible literally, you know. So the whole thing about, you know, uh, like abortion, you know, being sinful, that country of the Bible, you know, trans country of the Bible, no qualms about that at all. No. And and uh and, and that was a great freedom you see there that you, you preach the gospel and people wanted to hear the gospel. Now I know there are people in Ireland too who wanted to hear the gospel as well, but I think you also have people as well who who I don't know, they, they are, whether they don't want to hear it or not, I'm not sure. But I, I think that um that's what caused the church I, I think that's what caused people to walk away from the church because they're not really hearing the gospel. Because what they hear in church, they hear in the, from the culture. So they don't need to go to church. You know, to, 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 exactly, what's it offering? And that's the thing. Well, yeah. So I, I guess, you know, uh, we always said, you know, nobody goes through life without suffering of some kind. <laughs> I thought maybe this is mine. Has he given you your license back? But he never took it away, you see. I got, there was nothing in writing, in writing. All he said was... He just took care of the parish. All he said was, I'm taking you off the masses until the parish priest comes home. Right. Comes back. But he never picked up the phone to call me since. Extraordinary. The lack of duty of care there, I would have thought, as much as anything else. Isn't it? So, you know... Uh, so now, I mean, I try to read Master to him, but also actually I've gone to some of the parishes as well, you know, to, to, but it's up to the parish priest, obviously, because he has to give you delegation, you know, that. And uh, so I do, uh, and people call. But then there are other parishes, you see, like a couple of weeks ago, 
uh, family call me because their mother died, you know, and uh, they, they, we, is, it, this is the great irony, you know, God has a strange sense of humor. Every, the second Tuesday of every month, there's a group that meet in my house where we pray for the bishop and the priest of the diocese. Oh, wonderful. Well done. About 20 people who come, you know. And, uh, but then, like a couple of weeks ago, a uh, family called and there was a, their mother died. They wanted to know if I would uh, celebrate the funeral, you know. But I said, you have to call local local priest. He wouldn't, he wouldn't give me the okay. Yes. So it's divided the, the clergy. It has. It has divided the clergy. Yes. What, do you know what the proportion is? In the diocese, who'd support you? And I, 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 yeah, I wouldn't know that. You know, maybe three or four call. It's, it's like they're afraid. Yeah, it's trouble. They're exactly, they're afraid, and uh, and I mean, I could understand that and to to a degree. I mean, I was independent, you see, because I was not dependent on on the diocese for for my income. Mm. You know, because I have a pension from Baton Rouge. Um, I guess I was. I I also. Uh, was not directly under the bishop because my bishop acts is in Baton Rouge as well. Right. So uh, and so he, <coughs> he gives me my celebrates and so on and so forth as well. Right. But I, I couldn't tell. You. Actually, I got a lot of calls from priests outside of of Kerry as well. I even got a call from a priest in the Vatican. Really. A canon lawyer saying, if you want to to push the case canonically, I'll be glad to wow. to, to be there. But I said, no, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I just don't, because, I mean, in a sense, you know, as the old saying, well, it was really no skin off my nose, you know, God bless you. Excuse me, thank you. It was no skin off my nose. I think it's their problem. Well, of course, I didn't realize canonically that you were still under the Bishop of Battle Route. As I am. you say, you're, you're, uh, yes. there, there's no little legal clash. It's That's right. That's right. Pastoral preference. That's right. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Exactly right. Exactly right. And so, Can you tell us a bit more about this, this um, atmosphere of fear? Because it seems to me to characterize a lot of the church, uh, including, including many of the bishops. One of the reasons we think that bishops who have good hearts, love the Lord, understand the gospel, but they keep a low profile, is that that atmosphere of fear extends to them too. It is. Fear dominates faith within the church. And uh, there's a... Because I think, you know, you know, it's like, you know, how much stuff is attributed to COVID, you know, a lot of mm. stuff is attributed to these scandals, you see. But, but, but the, the scandals are not faced because well over 90% of the, of the sexual scandals were homosexual. They were with post-pubescent boys. The minority was pedophilia, really. But that is not faced because it's not addressed politically. The other thing is, they seem to be terrified of the media. Mm. I mean, I don't know how many priests actually said, oh, I, I, I would never, I would wow. never give an interview and whatnot, you know. And I said, w why not? I mean, why not? <coughs> you just speak from what you know. <coughs> and, and if the person is trying to lead you in the direction you don't want to go in, don't go. Mm. But I think there's a real, a real uh, fear. And I think that's a big fear. The other thing is that um, they don't want to offend anybody. You know, I was talking to a person this past, uh, just before I came up here, and this past week, for example, where you had the gospel, you know, about um, past Sunday uh, uh, on marriage, divorce, <coughs> adultery, that in the parish that this person went to, the only part of the gospel that was read was the part that says, unless you become like little children, mm -hmm. not again. all the rest of it was totally avoided. <coughs> wow. Wow. So, so, and, which and happens increasingly. It does, sadly, sadly, mm -hmm. and, and uh, Galatians one six comes to mind. That, if you preach another gospel, that's, no, and that's, that's exactly that. right. And the whole idea of, of preaching season, out of season, convenient or inconvenient, is dropped. And and you see, people now will go to the press. They'll go to the media immediately. Bleating. Yeah, well, and because we're not offering a robust <coughs> alternative no, to the media narrative, no, are no, we? No, it's no, like, they, no. why are they fighting? Do they no. not believe? Do That's they, right. You know, do they not believe that, that we've got the truth? So That's perhaps, right. Perhaps the answer to the question, why me, Lord, would be because you were the only one who wasn't afraid. Yeah. Quite possibly. It didn't, it didn't occur to me. It didn't even occur to me. You know, and was it, even, it was interesting, even in the, in the, the, <laughs> even in the uh, personal rights for the Irish Catholic, kind of uh, said, well, you know, you really were a guest priest, and so you really shouldn't have 
said something like that, you know. In, in, because guest priests yeah. are a lower a lower class <laughs> of priests right. who sometimes right. don't have responsibility to the church or the gospel. <laughs> that's right. Obviously. Yes, yeah. So they kind of, you know, tried to, uh, you know, say, well, you know, really you shouldn't have said this because uh, you, you really went the past. An abuse of hospitality. I'm thinking to myself, you know, well, you're, 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 you're a preacher, you're a preacher, you're a priest, the gospel is the gospel. gospel, the gospel. Yeah. It yeah, doesn't exactly. change regardless, you know, of who's preaching it. But look, uh, about uh, two years ago, I met a woman who was a uh, secretary in her parish. We were talking, you know, about the church and so on. And uh, uh, she said, uh, and she made the statement, she said, I wonder, she said, if even the priests here believe. Really? No, I was thrown. I thought, wow. if that's the, you know, wow. And I, I think to myself, well, if that's the case, but then you go back, like you were saying when you were referring to Bishop Fulton Sheen, you know, it, the, the renewal is going to come from the lay faithful, mm -hmm. you know, because <coughs> I remember this is many, many years ago before I w went to America. I was in London and um, I went to uh, Hyde Park, you know, uh, Hyde Park yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. Speaker's Corner. And uh, I remember there, there was a, a little uh, Franciscan. He was, really, he was really little, but he was in his four robes. And he was on his soapbox, you know, just like all the rest of them. And I remember, well, he was talking about the, uh, the, the Pope and the papacy and the, you know, the principle of continuity mm -hmm. and all the rest. That, but there was a woman in the, in the, in the audience who was, she was heckling. And she was annoying the people who were there because she kept shouting out, <coughs> Peter was married and he ran away from his wife. Peter was married and ran away from his wife, and he ignored her. And then he stopped in the middle of a sentence, and he looked at it, and he said, Sister, if she was anything like you, I certainly wouldn't blame the man. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, <coughs> go for it. <laughs> go for it. But the other thing that interested me as well was that um, there was a lot of anti-Catholicism, you know, like taking shots like St. Cat. Catholics are cannibals because they, they mm. believe that they're eating the, the body and drinking the blood of Christ. And, you know, they have all, they, they adore the saints and they adore Mary and all this stuff. And what occurred to me was, why, why are you blasting the Catholic Church, you know? Why don't you take a shot at some other group, you know, for a change? Franciscan. Yes, and that, that Franciscan, you know, really impressed me because he showed that he was so confident in his faith that nothing would fit. And he didn't argue with her. Mm. He just... Yeah. Eliminated her immediately, and and to me, you know, uh, but see, in America, people would tell you, you know, look, I need to hear this, I need to hear that, and so on and so forth. So you knew what the people wanted, and then there was so much interaction between the priests and the people as well, yeah, that you worked together as well, and so you weren't really speaking to people you didn't know. Yeah, but they used to tell us in the seminary as well, don't talk to people you don't know, you know, that kind of, at least don't preach to people you don't know. Yeah. But doesn't it show the power, the, the importance of that witness? You you saw that Franciscan and it moved something in you to say, look at that courage. And that yes. courage was then had a ripple effect. That's that, right. That you recognise the importance That's of right. courage. Then if then you speak courageously That's and then right. other people uh, see that witness and, and have the strength and the backbone and the courage to do so. So we have to be able to do that and realise that it will it will help others to do so. And actually, that spurred my thinking about a vocation. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wow. And I've often said I got my vocation in, in uh, Speaker's, Speaker's Car in London. Wow. Really, yeah. because I, and my motivation was to to be able to explain that what the church teaches is reasonable. But it sounds like the crisis that you had was a direct uh, consequence of your original vocation. I mean, you're you're <laughs> simply was. being faithful to your vocation, so that would happen. It, it was really yes. And this group at the back were were, were the equivalent of the woman heckler. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> delivering you to the. That's and, right, and you saw them off, it, that, and then the whole thing became public and became much, much more important than it would have been if they'd ignored you. Oh, it did. It did. Actually, the media shouldn't have said anything. Mm. Oh, yeah. Because then it would have just been there, and that's yeah. it. And nobody would have uh, uh, taken it up, taken yeah. it up and, and responded and so on. And so uh, it's, it's a very gospel pattern. If Judas had not betrayed our Lord, there would have been no crucifixion. No. If the bishop had not betrayed you, that's right. there yeah. would have been no media fuss. That's right. As soon as you say that this is not what the church teaches, yeah. it begs the question, what does it teach yeah. then? That's and right. now you have a platform to say what the church teaches. I remember I got a call from an imam in Iran. Yeah. No, really? I did. Wow. I did. And, and he said, 
what's wrong with your people? He said, <laughs> isn't that part of your, your belief? You know? yes. And I got, I, I, I think I mentioned that to, to one of you, I got a call actually from members of the Church of Ireland in Kildare mm -hmm. saying, you know, we, we're behind you. We're behind, yeah, but, but, exactly. but that's, yeah. that's a bit of a miracle. We have, to have the Church of Ireland back you. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. That's quite miraculous. Yeah, yeah absolutely. What an ecumenical healing, Father. Precisely, <laughs> precisely. So, you know, when you hear people like that, well, you know, because you know how you begin to doubt yourself. I, I, sure. I think I was beginning to doubt myself, you know, like, did I, did I really say something that uh, deliberately hurt people? Mm -hmm. And I never even mentioned the word, you know, homosexual per se. Mm -hmm. Never mentioned the word because that was not part of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the same-sex marriage was because that's, mm -hmm. Sinful, you see, and and that's according to the church's teaching. What they do, not what they are. Well, exactly. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I said, "Okay, Lord, you know." And then I said, "Why the one did I come back here to this country? Yeah. Why didn't I stay where I was?" Because yeah. you know, you're needed here. You're but needed here. I thought, "Look, I said, well." Then when I met people, you know, who said, "Look, you did give me a boost," I thought. And then what really kind of concretized for me. I got calls from a couple of people who identified as same-sex oriented, and they said, we're glad you said what you did because we're striving to live the Christian life, right. and we need to hear what Absolutely. the church teaches. That's huge. And I thought, look, if this really helps one person, you mm. know, to, to be faithful, face their, 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 yeah. cr their cross and their difficulty, then it's all worth and it. And this is the thing. We had a conversation just before you arrived here in Ireland about this <coughs> idea of lived experience. We want to re we want to listen to people's lived experience, but it seems not the experience of those people who contacted you That's who right. say, "Actually, we are we thank you for yes. helping strengthen our resolve to to live according to church teaching because we see we know it's difficult, but we see its truth, its goodness, its beauty. But that that lived experience seems to be outside the yes. Um, yes. The, you know the, the the parameters of what's being sought. Yes. Yes. Which is, Yes, yeah, and of course, to me, lived experience then see trying to make, make tries to make everything subjective sure, sure, rather than yeah. you know objective yeah. as well. So it's my experience, and and my experience and my then truth. makes everything valid and whatever. <laughs> my truth is right, yeah, yeah, my truth and your truth, you know. Well, then, uh, it's kind of like fundamental option, isn't it? It know? is, it is, it is absolutely, yeah, yeah. So how did you end up here this weekend? Because well, like I said, you know, the first time that I that I came in contact with with, with you was when somebody sent me the the the, the, the um, program that you did, you know, uh, whatever you're talking about. And Catherine's and, remark about laundry and Catherine's remark. <laughs> <laughs> my cough, by the way. Sorry. But then, uh, then yeah, I have I've looked it up um, uh, on it, the internet as well, mm -hmm. and you know, gotten so your talks and uh, mm -hmm. and so on. I thought, well, you know, these, these people are just different because. Some, some of the blogs, you see, mm. where they're quite Catholic, they're ideological. In other words, like they said, the Latin mass is the only mass type thing, you know, mm. too, or this is the only thing, or that's the only thing, whereas... Partisan. Exactly, partisan. It's where, both ends. Well, exactly, mm. right. So, you know, it, it's kind of the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know, the wise and the unwise and the otherwise. Yes. Who's who? Well, you're, you're... <laughs> <laughs> that's not good there. I nearly fell into that one. Hook, <laughs> line, and sinker. <laughs> Sorry, Father, go on. Pay no attention to the heckler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so then when you advertised, you know, I thought, yeah, this, this will be interesting. And it, it'll always be good to kind of sit back and listen to someone else, you know, and how they mm. frame something or how they articulate something and where the experience comes from as well. And then uh, this woman I know, she's from Wexford, and... Uh, she is, is in Australia, but she she comes to visit, and she she was actually here, and uh, she she comes she comes to mass here mm -hmm. from where she lives in Wexford, and so I was talking to her, and she said, "You have to come to Glen Comera House," and then I thought, you know, when I saw your your uh, advertising, you know, this uh, this uh, uh, retreat uh, or what what did you call it? Uh, retreat friends. Retreat friends. <laughs> I thought, oh, maybe I will. I will, and um, uh, so yeah. So I'm, I'm glad I did because did you find it? I find it very. Heresy meter for Jim or <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I, I find it. I find it first of all very reasonable, and I find it very enriching too. And I found that it was not just uh, academic, 
that it was spiritual, mm. you know, and theological. Like it was the it was the faith. Mm. And I guess also I figured, well, I'm sure they had lived experience. <laughs> <laughs> Our hopefully lived experience, yeah. you know. What experience isn't lived, by the way? Yeah. Well, precisely. I mean, it's not an experience unless it's lived, is it? Oh. You know. Uh, but I know in in the US, you know, way way back, yeah, they had this thing about lived experience. But they, they said, you know, there are two kinds. There's raw experience and lived experience. So raw experience probably begins in the womb, you know. And li- uh, but lived experience then is the is the law, raw experience that you bring to consciousness. And you reflect upon, and you think about, <coughs> and you make it your own as well. Yeah. But um, yeah, and I also thought that you know I, I'm sure that most of the people who will come here will be interesting as well. Yeah. And they uh, were, weren't they? Oh, absolutely. They really I mean, <coughs> I mean, it's such a cross section of, of people with varied experiences, uh, you know, in their lives and various things that they're struggling with. We had all interested in deepening their understanding of the faith. Yeah. Uh, and making it their own, you know, ho- hopefully. And so, so it, it has been, a, 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 to use the word, exp- an enriching experience, actually, for me, you know, Joe. And you've been brilliant, Father, because you are here as, as a guest, but you've yeah. contributed, um, I think, in, in, in a way that's been really helpful for others um, as well. And so your, your presence here has been a great honour for us really lovely, and, yeah. and has helped the other retreatants here over the weekend, the treat, for instance. I feel like we made a really good friend as well. Like we <laughs> oh, really absolutely, well. absolutely, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, and you see, I think, you see, I think, again, there's a, such a need, you know, for the laity to, to say, look, our faith is real, you know? Mm. Uh, it's, not just, it's not just for us, yeah. it, it, it's for others as well. And, you know, what we experience, you know, we can share with you, and you can too, yeah. if you're open, to the Holy Spirit, and then you know to to bring in you know esoteric things, you know like those who say I was a young gay at one time, you know, and so on and so forth as well. Because I'm in America, and you were right. I remember in America meeting people who went to some of these young gay seminars and came back thinking mm-hmm. he was God, mm-hmm. yeah, that he had all the answers to everything, mm-hmm. sure. you know. Uh, and of course, then see when he's compared with Freud, you know, he's a breath of fresh air, mm-hmm. you see, in many ways. But poor man was searching himself, mm-hmm. see too, and and he was searching within the limit of the finite rather than really going into the to the to the infinite, and that was the problem as well. So yes, it was it was certainly I would say well worth coming. Wow. You heard it here, well worth coming from Father Sean <laughs> Sheehy. There we are, Father. You you just you're just back from Medjugorje as yes. well, and yeah, maybe so, we've, thank you for giving us your time, but maybe just to finish. To offer to our viewers that we, we do get a lot of people asking about Medjugorje. Could you share with us your your experience of going there? Yeah, my I went first of all, I guess by default, uh, because uh, a man called me and he had a group, and the priest who was supposed to go with them wasn't able to go, so he called me and asked me if I would fill in. You know, twice I refused. Third time he called, I said, "Okay, I'll go," and um, because I really had no interest in 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 the visionaries. Uh, I mean, I, personally, I don't really have much interest in private revelation. You know, to me, what's in the scriptures and teaching the church is, is quite sufficient. And I know some people benefit from it, and I say good for them. So I went basically to, to help the group because they want to have group masses, and I went there to do that. But I was, I was really impressed by the spirit of worship at the mass. You know, we have a thousand people maybe in the church, and... I mean, every one of them was there by choice. And, and their sense of prayerfulness, you could just feel. Mm-hmm. And, and also, then I, I spent a number of hours here in confessions, because that's part, that's part of the expectations there as well. It, it's, it's like, you know, you're invited, you're encouraged, you're urged to do this. And so people then kind of drop their fears of, of, of uh, going to confession, uh, are, are their hesitancy, or they didn't give in to their pride and whatnot. And I call them conversion confessions. So as a priest, you know, it's like, it's like a surgeon performing surgery. As a priest, it, I mean, that's, that's who you... It must that, be powerful. It is, it is, and that's why you're there, really. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where you really represent Christ, you know, mm. the one who came to call sinners and to 
bring forgiveness to the world. And, and also there was a spirit of friendliness there as well, where people would stop and even though I spoke different languages, say, hello, my name is, how are you, how are you doing? And then the other thing was the age range from children all the way to senior citizens like myself. And all the, and like there, there, there are two groups there. They're, like I, I was saying to you, to you I think, Gavin, they're, they're, the, they're the committed people and they're the searchers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the committed people are, give great witness to the searchers. And the searchers uh, endorse our, our, how would I put it? Um, um, they kind of give the, give the committed people a real sense of making a contribution to someone as well. So that's part of it. And, and from, the, from the, the Eucharist and from the, the confession and from the prayer and the adoration and the climbing the mountains where these apparitions supposedly took place, there's a real sense of inner peace, mm. a real sense of inner peace. The other thing is that, that you know, one of the things that runs through these messages that the, these visions supposedly receive is if you have to make a choice, between attending an apparition or going to mass, go to mass because that's where my son yeah. is. That's yeah. that's the overall um, uh, recommendation as well. And I would say to any <coughs> any priest, go there because it's a real uh, endorsement of the priesthood. Any priest who thinks that his priesthood isn't really worth very much or doesn't contribute, go there. And the people will tell you. They'll walk up and tell you. Mm. You know. Face to face, you know, we thank you for your priesthood. We thank you for bringing Christ to us and so on and so forth. And it's great for the priest as well because it makes you realize, you know, you know, very often I'm not very Christ-like, you know. So I need to shape up here because of the expectation of the people. And like I was saying to a group the other night, you know, like when the priest begins the Mass and he says, uh, the Lord be with you, you know. He's reminding the people that the Lord is here. He's here now. So become conscious of that. And when they say, and with your spirit, they're saying, okay, fine, then you must be open to the spirit and be the priest mm. that we need you to be for us. Mm. So there's a real sense of, of, the, of the sacramental, the priesthood of the, of the ordained priesthood and the priesthood of the laity. And the ordained priesthood is now nurturing, reinforcing, and inspiring the priest of the laity. So... And the interesting thing about Medjugorje, as compared to some other uh, Marian shrines, is that people who go to Medjugorje feel like, when I get back, I need to do something. In other words, I need to really share it with others. Yeah. Whereas the other shrines, like I go for myself, you know, type thing, and it's my own spiritual growth or sp spiritual strengthening or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. but, but there's a missionary aspect to Medjugorje as well. See, too. Mm -hmm. But like I said... Medjugorje could be anywhere if people really came together to pray, they really came together to worship, they really came together to, to, to be church, to be church, you know, with Jesus in the center and the Holy Spirit as the guide and the Father protecting everybody. Yeah. Well, thank you for thank your you. priesthood, Father. No, oh, thank it's you. It's been such a pleasure thank to you. have you this weekend. Thank I you. Say. And you've made such a difference to the discussions and to us as well. It's been wonderful to, to make friends with you but i say to priests all the time you know go to these prayer groups you know talk to the people because there's a mentality in ireland that if the people are doing something i don't need to be there out, yeah. <laughs> and that's terrible yeah. yeah yeah to me it's a little bit like in a marriage you know just because the the wife does it the husband thinks, well i don't really have anything to do with that but it's a partnership right you know i mean one may have be more gifted in an area than another but mm. it's still a partnership mm. whether that's broken down. We talked in our retreat uh, quite a lot about education and that relationship between the family, the parish and the school has broken down and it should be, that should be uh, united yes. in one vision for this child who's been gifted to us to, to, to prepare them for, for, for heaven. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like you said, you know, to, to put them on the road to sainthood. Yeah. Yeah. Because we think of saints as these unattainable people who uh, maybe one in a million might be right. and, and right. we need to be saying to young people no no you've been created you mark all of us right. all of our children 
uh, Saint Stephen of Stevenage, Saint yes, Lawrence of Listowel. That's right. Um, and and instead of giving them heroes and heroines from media and film and TV, we right. need to introduce them to the saints. Absolutely, and the only way to be to become a saint is to let the gospel mm -hmm. purify us. Yeah. Yeah. And if I don't hear the gospel, then I'm going to stay in the same old miserable individual, you know, that I've always been. And that's the difference. And I'm, con <coughs> I'm convinced that if, if the bishops and the clergy took a leaf out of Mark's gospel, where Jesus' first words were, reform your life, yeah. repent, believe in the gospel, I do believe the church would be full. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's Amen. a wonderful place to end. And thank you definitely for your priesthood. Thank you, Father. And thank, thank you for joining us. Uh, Gavin and I are going to go off and have a copying competition now to see. <laughs> so sorry about that. Mark's been putting up with us all weekend. Mm. Uh, we returned from Pittsburgh having picked up something that we're shaking off still. Uh, but thank you to all of you for watching. Once again, thank you. To thank you. It was a privilege. Thank you. Bless him, Almighty God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, to send on us, remain with us forever. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. And God bless your work. And with your spirit. You know, like St. Paul says, with the strength of him who loves me, I can do all things. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you very much.